Have you ever thought about what it's like for your PI during this time of quarantine and coronavirus crisis? Well, today on Surviving and Thriving in Higher Education, we have exactly that for you. We're talking with Dr. Unji Chung at the University of Southern California about what it's like to run a research laboratory while working from home and being with family. The timestamps are in the description or the comments below, so I hope you enjoy it and that you stay tuned for more. Um. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, my name is uh, Chung, and I'm an assistant professor um, here at USC. And um, broadly, our research aims to develop nanomaterials and biomaterials for drug delivery, um, imaging, and regenerative medicine. How do you think COVID uniquely or differently affects researchers, especially in the healthcare sector, such as yourself? Well, because our work is primarily experimental and we have to use the lab and currently USC is at 30% occupancy. Even though our space can accommodate probably everybody in my lab, we're still at 30% occupancy. So that's about two people at a time. And we've shifted our hours of work such that there are two people that can work from you know 7 a.m. to 1 p.m and then 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. essentially. And now we're building in working on the weekends as well to maximize our time in the lab. When we submit to our journal, we hold ourselves to high academic standards. Or do you think uh, reviewers will look at things differently considering that we are in a pandemic? That's hard to say. A lot of the SARS-CoV-2 research that have been published in really renowned journals are now being retracted because of the way that they publish their work in such haste. And so I think it's actually critical, even amongst a situation that is very unprecedented and unpredictable, that we maintain our standards. Yeah. The amount of time to you know, achieve that kind of standard might take a little bit longer. But you know, we are in a pandemic. And so I think we need to give ourselves some grace. We can be empathetic towards our people. We shouldn't lax on the scientific standards. How do you think or has the focus on research or COVID research affected motivation and grants, um, particularly for, for funding as, you're, as, we're, as people are looking for funding and continuing to write grants for them? You know, that's probably case by case, but I think it's also um, dependent on your personal situation because I know there are some folks in the pandemic where maybe this is like, wow, I have so much time. Other subsets of people, they have no time to themselves, no time to work because they have little kids, they have homeschooling, and they're trying to juggle. And so they could be just a bit more burnt out. Burnout can affect someone's motivation and just because they're very tired. Nonetheless, I think PIs do have a responsibility to continue their work and to support their lab members. So I think the motivation is always there. Now we just have to find pockets of time that we probably never utilize. So I know I work on the weekends. I did that before, but now it's consistently every weekend. I work at night and or my kids are up and I try to carve out a good chunk of time during um, day to have meetings. So I try to provide some sort of stability so that the lab folks in my group, they know what to expect and we can always have some sort of uh, rhythm. Since working from home, what are some of the new rhythms that you found? I think there is always a silver lining to every situation. I've never been closer to my kids just because I, I am physically closer to them always. Um, you know, my commute to USC is an hour and a half one way and now that's cut out. You know, that does give me some flexibility and of course everyone has flexibility now of when they need to get out of their pajamas or whatever. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I used to never exercise just because I really had no time to. It's either I'm going doing something for work or doing something for the kids. But now I'm able to run with the kids, let's say, or, you know, do some exercise together. So I think there's always, you know, something positive here that we can find. I homeschool my um, older son, you know, usually in the mornings. You know, he knows a lot more science and virology and immunology now, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because I'm homeschooling him, um, you know, as a parent. You know, you're able to see very closely your child's developmental stages. Mm -hmm. And so I can kind of build in, okay, this is an area that he has a weakness in. Let's, let's kind of, you know, work at this a bit more. I think that has been really nice to get a better pulse and a better reading on your kids. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting to see. Like, I, I was sort of homeschooled and distance educated for a long time. So it's now it's, it's uh -huh. interesting to see everyone else having my experience. In right. That. 
Yeah, that's right. Um, so I know that I've definitely talked to some folks that always have work from home and they're like, oh, now everyone just understands what I do every day. And um, or what, specifically this patent lawyer that works from home that I, through, he, he helps USC, but he was just saying how, um, you know, he takes very scheduled walk um, and there, it's it's very like regimented so that he can go out. As we begin gearing up for the fall semester, and I think almost two or three weeks, um, what are some of your concerns um, in returning to to USC in the fall, if you have any? Or yeah, I think my biggest concern is my undergrads, because um, the undergrads, in terms of the undergrad research, they they always participate in research, and in the summer, of course, we change that for them to participate virtually using images and data for them to analyze from like an existing set of collections. Um, and so I think that can really hinder their ability to kind of, you know, physically be there and learn by doing. They can learn a lot of things about our research, but not able to do the research and pick up those skills. I guess more broadly, um, because we're at 30% occupancy anyway, I think the biggest place that we are missing is the interaction as a group. And of course we have Zoom and group meetings built in on Mondays and we have our one-on-one -on -one meetings on Fridays and we have ad hoc sort of smaller group meetings. But, you know, oftentimes I, go to the grad student office and we kind of brainstorm ideas as a group or I'll just check in and um, help them with their um, data or take a microscope, you know, uh, image or exactly what they're doing just because there's some, just by experience, I have just a know-how um, that they could find useful and between each other too, troubleshooting, training each other. I think those are sort of concerns, I think, for the upcoming fall, especially as I think about my first year grad students as well that are coming in. Mm -hmm. I mean, so speaking of grad students, um, what are challenges associated with communicating with them and are, as a PI, are there any differences in expectations? Um, I think when we were all at home, but the expectations were obviously very different. It, it was actually fortunate that during that time, we were in a good place to write papers and write up our results. So everyone did do that. Now, yeah, they're able to go into the lab, but not every day um, and be basically not at the same amount of time that they used to before. I wouldn't say that my expectations have really changed that much. I feel like if they are able to plan well, they can offset the things that they would be doing like analyzing data or writing up their results or start you know fleshing out their uh, thesis their introduction or something like i think they can balance that well with their time in the lab and doing experiments but for all we know that you know core facilities are not really at high occupancy and there are other things like that that are beyond our control and beyond just our lab setting that can slow them down so I think overall the expectations you know is to be productive but there's only so much we can do right now you make a good point about core centers I, I just I got the email that the Agilent uh, Characterization Center was like on stage two of reopening and I was like, oh wait, I forgot like core facilities exist and they need staff to run those. Yes, exactly. So some facilities, you know, they're not necessarily going to train incoming students or they might be doing the samples and not letting you run it so that they can limit how many people are in the core. That will depend on the staff's time and how many samples there are. So, you know, all these things can affect someone's progress, yeah, overall. What uh, <laughs> methods or practices are you planning on uh, using to stay healthy as you transition back in the fall? I see a lot of people who like do are really, really productive, but then they sort of burn out because mm -hmm. of these things. And so everything is gonna look a little bit different. There's just, so much unpredictability and that can offset how you can work right um and, and that ultimately affects your ability to work and your burnout rate um and so i think there was a time where i tried to oh my gosh like you know oh okay this is exactly the plan but i think at one point you're like okay this could change at 
any moment. Just the way that our 30% occupancy can go back to 10%, you know? I think you just kind of take it one day at a time, but all things considered, if everything goes as planned in the fall, this fall was uh, for me to travel a lot more and give talk, but that's not really happening. So I am actually going to give a lot of virtual talk. People are just trying to do what they can, putting their best foot effort. I think what's important is to just give yourself some sort of weekend where you are kind of breaking from the whole, um, it's hard to compartmentalize right now. It's like just all bleeding into like one take a weekend. Um, get off the screen a little bit you, you know I know that we're all kind of on Netflix and things like that but but and zoom and everything so I think it's probably good to you know do something outside of the you know <laughs> the, the screens um, as a PI do you have any like words of advice or words of wisdom for PhD students of all sort of different levels on just how to continue research or continue navigating this time this time is going to end at one point but how you come out at the end i think could look different depending on like your mentality and how you kind of approach the situation you know i think you always want to be working towards your milestones and being productive there are problems you know always communicate them to your lab members your pi and bring it up as an issue so you can kind of work through them i think with you know good planning and communication your productivity can remain still quite high but having said that we were just talking about like give yourself some breaks so that you can prevent burnout um, and and to like take that weekend and vacation even with these shifted schedules but i think it's really important to know that this time is going to end and if you can build in every day something you know by the end of this year by the end of the pandemic you know continue to build on your um, you know PhD but I think if you can be conscientious about how to do that I think you can achieve quite a lot you know hopefully by the end of it you're in a much closer place to the you know your goals than you might have thought I think it's important to also just stay positive it is gonna end so um, you know just kind of continue to achieve something every single day and be you know aware of aware that this is just a, a matter of time that it will slow down and things might not look exactly the same as before but at the same time I think you know you can make the most out of the situation whatever that means yeah wonderful well Dr. Chung thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today yeah thank you thanks for having me Thanks so much for watching, and thank you Dr. Chung for spending the time to speak with us today. If you guys want to, you guys can leave us a like, a comment, and subscribe for more if you guys want to see more of this coronavirus series. Leave us a comment, let us know how it's going, whether you guys are enjoying it, whether you guys find it helpful, and if there are any other questions we should ask our interviewees. If you guys are looking for more things to watch, we've got some suggestions up here on some more interviews and some more discussions about grad school and what that life is like.